Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna have a really fun um, experiment with watercolors, using them on colored paper as well as watercolor paper. So I thought it'd be just kind of fun to use some inexpensive paints. These are by Joy Art. They're under 15 bucks, and um, I think they're gonna work out really well for this project. There's also some brushes here in this kit, and I figured, what the heck, I'm gonna give these a try as well. And um, the company did give me a coupon code to share for these, so 10% off in the video description so you can get them for even cheaper probably under $14. Uh, so if you did want something for your kids or just something to play around with, it's a good idea. You will want to wash your brushes out, just rinse them to get the sizing out of them. And um, we're gonna see how they go. I mean, we got a number six, a number seven, a round, and a number seven flat. So we'll give those a whirl. The colors that I've put out on my palette are rose, uh, lemon yellow, flesh tint, which is kind of like an apricot kind of color here, if you can see there, up in the corner. Um, yellow ochre, burnt umber, a cerulean blue and viridian, because I want the, we're gonna do like a mint um, soft serve ice cream cone, so I thought that were pistachio, I don't know, it's kind of that minty color. And we're gonna want a couple little puddles of white because we'll need that for when we're working on our craft colored paper. I like to put a couple little puddles so that way I don't contaminate the whole thing. When I'm working with student grade paints, I like to use, uh, use them fresh from the tube and I'll often use more colors than I would if I was using artist grade paints because um, often you don't know what colors are in the, what pigments are in the paint, so that just avoids mud. Uh, the color paper I'm working on is Tone Tan Mixed Media by Strathmore. I'll link everything up in the video description so you can find it. Um, and I just like this because it can handle a lot of different techniques, water, and it's not gonna warp on you. And then for my watercolor paper, I just have a Strathmore watercolor greeting card, and I get those in packs of 100 because I use them a lot in my, um, in my classes. So I'm just gonna start by sketching. I'm gonna use a watercolor pencil for this. Any watercolor pencil is fine. And you can use a regular pencil if you don't wanna use a watercolor pencil. Um, the, re the nice thing about a watercolor pencil is that it will, it will dissolve. So I'm gonna start just by kind of putting really lightly a triangle for where I want the um, top of the ice cream to be in green. And I'm just gonna use kind of like yellow ochre and do a, um, to do the cone. I'm gonna start with kind of a, a trapezoid here, and then I am going to put a triangle underneath it. Um, go smaller, when in doubt, kind of go smaller. That way, if you end up needing to make it bigger because it was lopsided, you can do that. Now, the reference photo I'm working from is from Unsplash, and I will link that up below. Um, the reference photo has a napkin on the cone, and I might add, or a little wrapper. I'm not sure if I'm gonna add that in or not. And I think I'll probably just draw it on here, and I'll pause the video, and then you can just draw it on both, both, uh, both papers since it's the same thing. Or you can draw it on a scrap of paper, and then you can just, um, you could just transfer it <laughs> to both things, and you'd have the exact same drawing. But I enjoy the process of drawing, so. I'm just gonna go ahead and draw it twice. So I just wanna get those um, those ridges from the soft serve, uh, um, from the soft serve machine there. It's kind of like frosting. And I also like to get that curly cue on top because I just, I just love the shapes of like icing and stuff. I don't know, I just, I just find it so appealing. Okay, and draw the other one. You don't need to be too fussy and uh, we'll catch you back after this one is drawn over here. The big difference in how I approach these two um, paintings will be the addition of white on the craft color paper. With the white paper, I can use white from the white of the paper as my white paint, but over here I'm gonna have to use something to make my paints a little bit more opaque. I'm gonna start off with yellow ochre and I'm gonna base coat in this ice cream cone. I did go ahead and um, put the wrapper on each of these cones, basically just by kind of dividing up an area there. Um, but just because I think it's it'll just be a little more interesting. Now I'm not using a lot of extra water when I'm working on the craft paper for two reasons. Um, even though it's mixed media paper and it can stand up to water, it's not going to be as sized as watercolor paper, so it's not going to take quite as much. So now that I've got that yellow ochre, and in yellow ochre does tend to be a little more opaque, now I'm gonna go in with my uh, brush and pick up some white, 
And I'm going to go in and add that to the areas where I want there to be a little bit more highlight. I'm using the flat brush that came with these paints. And I am just going to go in and add the highlight details. I didn't draw every detail in. I figured I would do a lot of that with the paint, so I just decided to make it easier on myself. Now, it is a little easier too if I turn my paper while I'm working, so make sure that you're working at a in a way that's comfortable for you. And if you find that your paint's not blending, you probably just need to add a little bit more water to your brush. And I'm not going down the rest of the way because I'm going to have that either a wrapper or a napkin there. Now on the other side, I'm going to want a little shadow. So I am going to grab some burnt umber. And I'm going to try adding it right on top. I might need to mix it out a little bit. I'm going to get that little shape there. And this is going to be just very, uh, very loose, a very loose style. Mix in with a little bit of the yellow ochre. Oh, and I also got this flesh tint because I thought this looked like it might be just about the right, the right shade too if I added a little yellow ochre to it. I always find that the, I, I rarely ever will use a flesh tint paint because nobody's flesh is that color. You can use it as a starting point and then mix it for skin tones, but um, it has so much white and pink in it usually that it's usually not that useful. So I usually mix my flesh tones um, up on their own, like fresh. Now I'm going to just reshape this area a little bit. And I am going to just add a little bit of a ridge there for that top lip of the ice cream cone. I kind of spent a little bit more time on the sketch here to be absolutely honest, so just to let you know that you might want to not rush that step. But I was actually thinking about this kind of like, um, oh, kind of like more of like a pop art type card. So that's why I was just kind of getting it pretty, pretty quickly. Now I'm just going to go in with white and get the either napkin or wrapper. I haven't decided what I'm going to do. It's a, it's a wrapper in the photograph, but, um, I can't, I, there's also a hand holding it and I don't, I didn't want to have the hand in there. So I might just make it kind of like a looser napkin. Plus I didn't, um, and take a lot of time drawing, so I don't want to, if I have a looser napkin, I can kind of fudge the fact that I didn't spend a lot of time on the drawing. So I think I'll just kind of make it a napkin and have a little piece kind of jutting off the side. And I can even go in with my, with my watercolor pencil and draw a little detail on top, maybe some wrinkles. Don't be afraid to mix your media. You are not going to hurt this pencil by drawing into wet watercolor paint because it's the same stuff that this lead is made out of. So, um, so don't, don't worry about that. And then if I wanted just a shadow, I can blend it out. I can add a little burnt umber on my brush if this is too blue. And the white paint here, this white watercolor is, is um, opaque enough to handle working on this craft. I wouldn't work on black paper with these paints. I definitely want to go with an actual gouache, but for um, you know, but for this fairly toned, like lighter craft paper, it is absolutely um, opaque enough for that, and it's a lot of fun. Um, and you may be thinking, well, so does that mean that gouache is just simply watercolor with white mixed in? Um, kind of in the olden days, that's what artists would do. They would go ahead and they would um, they would just carry a tube of white with them and they would add white to their watercolor and they would call it body color. Um, but back in the day, like if you're thinking of like the Impressionists, um, watercolor did not have as much binding in it. It didn't have, it wasn't as... Um, it didn't have as much humectant in it or, or as much gum arabic in it, so it wouldn't have that glossy look. So if you took like your really expensive watercolors 
and you just added white and you applied it thickly onto your paper, you would end up with some sticky, shiny spots and it, it wouldn't give you that gouache look. Gouache is also very matte. In addition to it being op an opaque watercolor, it's a very matte. Um, so you would end up with some shiny spots that would not look as nice. But when you're working with student grade watercolors, because they are, you know, they're budget minded, they can't use the quantity of pigments um, or gum arabic that your more expensive paints use, or glycerin for that, that matter, because those things are expensive. So they cut corners by um, reducing those and actually making them more like a gouache. That's why you can get very inexpensive student grade gouaches that perform beautifully because all those characteristics of um, inexpensive watercolor are kind of like those gouache characteristics. So you can take a, um, a inexpensive watercolor paint and you can use it as a gouache, which I think is just such a wonderful thing because um, that way you can play and experiment and get a couple uses for one, from one product and um, have some fun with it before you decide whether you want to invest in a more expensive grade of gouache. I mean, quite frankly, a lot of artist grade gouache aren't even light fast. So, um, of course, some are, but most of them are not. Um, you know, so if you're just thinking about buying the artist grade just for the light fast uh, quality, you're not necessarily getting that. It depends on what brand. I believe um, Holbein and M. Graham are light fast designers gouache. I do not believe Winsor & Newton is light fast. Um, so I figure if you're just learning, why not learn where you're not going to be so afraid of wasting, you know, because your stuff isn't that expensive. Now when you feel like your brush is starting to drag, go ahead and add some water. I like to put my white in first because this is such a light, um, light color of ice cream. If I get those lights in first, um, I know they're going to influence the overall color a little bit more. I'll be doing a completely different technique when we go into the into the watercolor version, the watercolor paper version. So I think it's kind of fun to see the difference. Now I want to yellow this up a little bit, so I'm going to take some lemon yellow, and I'm also going to grab some white. Now I'm just going to be careful that when I go in with my watercolor that I don't pick up the the extra white just because I don't want to have I don't want to have the white because if you add the white on watercolor paper I find it just makes everything look really chalky but you really need it for the freshness on the craft these um, toned mixed media papers came out last year and um, I don't use them as much as I should. I, I got the, the gray and the tan. They now have a, a blue and a green. Uh, but I just, I love working on craft paper for like scrapbooking and card making. It's like, you know, you need to do this for your painting too, because it's fun. The thing I also like about this, it's kind of like, I, I feel like gouache is very similar to oils. It's also kind of similar to acrylics too. So if you are at home, you're like, geez, I don't have any watercolors. Use your acrylics for this technique. You're, it's going to be fine. Um, but the thing that I really like about gouache is that I can re-wet my brush and I can go into it and I can get everything to blend again. Um, whereas if it was acrylics and it was dry, it would be permanent. It would have gone through a chemical change. You can also use um, a blending medium in your acrylics to make them behave a little bit more like um, uh, like an oil paint or a gouache. And that you can pretty much find that from from any manufacturer. I like the um, Delta Ceram Coat blending mediums. Actually, I like all their mediums. And if you're just um, getting into acrylic painting, they are so much cheaper than like Golden or Liquitex. And you can find them for like a couple dollars maybe a dollar or two a bottle at your craft store. So don't don't uh, don't poo poo those mediums. They can save you a lot of money and then you can kind of see what you actually what you actually will use. I'm liking this yellow that's got a, this LA that's got a little bit of yellow ochre in it for my highlights. Basically what I'm doing is I am just looking at the uh, the reference photo and I am um, grabbing any of the edges that I see kind of lit up and I'm just adding a little bit of streak on it. This is not going to be, you know, realistic really. It's going to be definitely more stylized and kind of like a fun, quicker demonstration. I know I've been doing a lot of longer ones or, or long ones that I've time lapsed and I want something to be a little bit more approachable. 
So if you're painting at home, you don't feel like you're like missing anything from a time lapse or spending all day watching a video when you just want to get to painting. Okay, I'm going to leave that be for now. I will add a little bit more detail later, but I'm going to skip over to this guy. Now, when I am doing um, wa a watercolor version on watercolor paper, the most important thing for me is to get some water in there. So I'm going in first and liquefying the watercolor pencil that I put down at the beginning. I love to use water. I love the white of the paper when I'm using watercolor paper. Um, I do like mixed media as well, so don't get me wrong there. Um, but I did have a, have a viewer say, gee, I wish you would just use watercolor because I don't have all these other materials and I feel like I can't get the results that you're getting, um, to paraphrase. So I thought by seeing the versatility we can get from one medium, that might really help folks that, um, you know, that just want to use that one medium or maybe they're trying to decide what to get and they want something that's going to be versatile. I'm liquefying this wrapper area here too, which I probably shouldn't have drawn so darkly on watercolor paper, but the nice thing about the watercolor pencils is I can blot off the excess. So I think I will, I also like that, how that wrapper kind of, kind of folded over on the other one. So I think I'll do that here. So it's like a napkin. Kind of get it shaped and then I will blot it off because I do have a lot of excess there that I don't need. There we go, now it's nice and light. Watercolor paper has um, what's called sizing in it and that just makes it so the um, your paint will kind of sit on the top of the paper a little bit and especially with a student grade watercolor paper that's what usually happens and that just gives you a little bit of working time so that you can remove your um, like unneeded pigment. So I've just mixed a little cerulean blue with a little burnt umber using the same colors, but we're just using them differently. And I've made myself a nice dark. So it's like a, it's kind of like a dark neutral grayish color. And I'm just gonna go ahead and, boy, these brushes aren't bad. <laughs> um, I'm just gonna go ahead and, and work on my little wrapper here and put a few little wrinkles in. So when I'm working on white paper, because I know that white of the paper is going to be um, my white paint, for instance, I'm gonna be very dainty with my um, with my use of color. I'm gonna go a lot lighter. I'm gonna rinse my brush off and I'm gonna spread out that color a little bit. Isn't that pretty? I like these paints because even though they're really inexpensive, they perform really nicely. They're not chalky looking, but you can do those gouache effects without things getting sticky and glossy on you. All right, so I just wanted to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a napkin. Maybe make it come out a little bit over here as well. There. I like that everything got toned when I wet everything to begin with. I think this would make a really fun, like, just, how are you doing, summer summertime card. Now for the cone, I am, um, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this color here that we mixed up. It was the flesh tone yellow ochre and I think a smidgen of the burnt sienna. And I don't think we added any white to that. Although the flesh tone, I'm sure, has some white in it just because, um, that's typically, that's typically, a flesh tone would typically be like, um, they'd add like a white and an orange, maybe some brown, depending on the, depending on the maker. And I'm also just defining my edges a little bit. I don't have it exactly like the other one, but that's all right. It's still an ice cream cone. Um, I want to make, um, I'm gonna grab a little more burnt umber and do a little bit of that shadowy color. I haven't added any yellow ochre to this really because I feel like the watercolor pencil had so much pigment in it that um, that there was plenty on there when I, when I drew it in there because on the white paper, everything's gonna show up so much better and you can, you know, do your whole sketch in watercolor pencils. If you're just working on watercolor paper, that would definitely be plenty of pigment. So if you just have watercolor pencils, do that. Um, you probably could use watercolor pencils and a white watercolor or gouache 
on the colored paper and get a really good result. Um, if you have tried that, let me know. I haven't tried that yet. I generally use my watercolor pencils either on their own or in, like, for drawing with my watercolors. I'm gonna grab a little bit of the yellow ochre. I'm just gonna blend that over a little bit. Just leaving kind of that brightest color um, from like our first washed on its own. I do want to bring that out a little bit more though, so. Okay. And then for up here, I think I'm just actually going to um, wet this and see how it looks. I might not need to do much to it if my drawing is is fairly accurate, which is wonderful. It's it's a great way to easily get some detail in. I probably will want to cool down and warm up some areas just to give it a little bit more life. Uh, you know, like you maybe have some warmer highlights in the top and have some cooler shadows in the ridges. I'm going to switch to that bigger brush too. Don't be afraid of the water when you're um, when you're working on the watercolor paper because it's going to need that water to flow. And if you feel like your um, if it feels like your paint is not moving or you feel like the brush is just kind of scraping the paper, you don't have enough water for watercolor. So now I'm going to grab a little bit of the um, the Viridian colored paint. I'm going to add a, just a little smidgen of that cerulean to it to cool it down a little bit. And that's going to go in my shadow areas. And I'm just doing this wet into wet here, which means my paint, the paint on my brush is wet and my paper is wet. So that's going to give me nice blendy edges. And I'm doing some ex expressive strokes here. All right, now I'm cleaning my brush. I'm going to just grab a little bit of the lemon and maybe a smidgen of the yellow ochre too because yellow ochre is a little bit warmer and I'm just going to go ahead and add some of that in some of the highlight areas and you can see how it just kind of warms everything up a little bit just try to avoid the white um, if you do have some white hanging around with your other yellows just try not to get into the white and just try to get that pure color in there if you get too much color somewhere what you want to do is go in with a paper towel or a tissue or a rag and just blot a little bit out and if you if your watercolor paper is decent you can wipe it a little bit but it's usually a safer bet just to blot it just in those highlight areas and then let this dry and we'll go in to add our detail layers I had originally gotten out some rose paint and I realized I hadn't used it at all so I thought it might be kind of fun to bring in uh, maybe in the wrapper a little bit because when you've got green the opposite of green is red and I thought getting some of this color in here would actually um, make our make our green ice cream look a little more appealing so I'm just glazing over uh, with a little bit of this rose here and I'm going to do the same over here onto this napkin as well. And then if you wanted to later, we can actually add some spatter of this um, onto our picture, which sometimes looks pretty cool. I also want to put a little bit in the cone. Really, really watery though. And I'll do a little bit over here. Maybe mix it into some, into some cerulean, make myself a little bit of a purple. Because that, um, that would be nice in my shadows. And it just, it just makes the color pop a little bit. It'll also make the color on the yellow cone pop a little bit too. And it will neutralize the yellow a little bit. So it shouldn't look completely garish, even though it seems like, oh, that's, that's a bright color to put in there. I also think it kind of gives you that pastel summer, summer look. And I think while I'm at it, um, as long as it's not too wet, I'm going to go put the word eat up on here. Uh, because you can kind of see that on the cone. It's just block letters. It doesn't need to be really, uh, really um, readable, just kind of in there. And I'm going to do the same over here. 
Um, now you do have to be careful when you're working over the dry gouache because um, it's you've got a thicker um, amount of paint here and also it's it's kind of sitting on top of the surface because it is a mixed media paper. It's designed to have that um, that sizing in there so everything's not going to just absorb into the paper. So because of that, it's almost like you're, you've got paint on your palette and it's going to want to lift up those colors. So you just want to be aware of that um, so that you don't end up like wiping off the paint you've already put. So it's not like a super big um, detail there. I just want to make sure you can see it in the light, just to give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of realism. So the thing I think to remember when you're going back and forth between these two is when you're working on the watercolor paper, since you're not using white, uh, you need the water. So the water is um, is your white. It's also the vehicle. It's also what's making your paint move. So when you're on the darker color, you can just add more paint if your paint feels, if your brush feels dry. But when you're on the watercolor paper, you need to add more water. So I'm going to make myself up a nice gray. I'm going to use my, um, my Viridian. Actually, I'll mix it over here. My Viridian, my Cerulean, and a little bit of burnt umber. for my shadow color. You could also use the Verdian plus a little bit of that rose even for your um, for your shadow, but I don't want it to be too, too gray. So I'm gonna clean my brush off there. I've got way too much paint for the watercolor version. And I'm gonna add some water to that because with watercolor, you're working in layers of translucent color. So you don't wanna have so much that it's looking opaque. And I'm just going to go in here and put in my deepest shadows throughout my ice cream. Remember, add water if your brush feels dry. Have fun with this. It's fun to paint the folds and the um, the ruffles in the ice cream. The ridges, the folds and ridges are a lot of fun. If you need to lighten something up, just go in with a damp brush and paint over it. Then you can blot it off or you can just spread out the color if that's all you need to do. And if you're trying to get detail and, and everything is blurring, just let it dry and come back to it. And although I don't, um, uh, you know, some of student grade colors won't let you mix too much. I still recommend you mixing at least somewhat to tone the colors to make sure you are getting the color you want. Even instead of doing, maybe you're not mixing a green with, with blue and yellow, you're taking a premix green, but add the, um, add the appropriate color to it so that you get a nice, um, accurate color to what you're trying to depict. And a lot of this is going to be done by adding colors next to each other on the on the subject. All right, I'm going to move over here. Now this one actually, I don't feel like needs that much. Um, your brush is going to, you want your brush a little bit drier. So I'm just picking up more color until I get more of like a, a heavy cream consistency to my paint because if it's too watery, I'm just going to end up lifting what's underneath. And I am just going to 
kind of go in there and just accent a few different shapes. I'm really not going to do too much. Sometimes if you do too much, it looks less, um, less realistic. I think I almost think that maybe I should have just left it alone. But I do like that contrast between the the shadow and the uh, highlight. And I do have to pick my color up a little more frequently so that I make sure I have enough on there and it will glide so I don't just lift up what's underneath. And I don't want to add like a dry brush texture to it either. I want it to be nice and fresh. And I can go in and do a little more in the highlighting. And you can reconstitute your paints. Obviously they're watercolor, so go ahead and... and um, add some water to it if it's drying up on you. That will happen if you live someplace warm or if you have, you know, really hot lights um, on everything like I do. So I'm just getting these warmer yellow highlights. add some final white highlights if you like. And any of this paint that's left over on my palette, I can um, I can just keep. I can keep there until I'm ready to use it up, which is nice. It doesn't have to go to waste. So that's why I try when I when I'm picking up color not to um, not to contaminate the whole puddle. That's why I put like a couple different drops of white. I do that when I am painting it in oils as well. I'm going to grab a little bit of this, uh, I'm going to put a little bit of white into this mix here and add some highlights on the texture of the cone because I can see that here, but the white on its own is just too, is just too white, too light for that. Sometimes you just see a little bit of sliver highlight coming around the back of a cylindrical object. And I just think it's so cool to see how like you can you can paint the same thing on two different with the same materials, but on two different surfaces and have a completely different look. I think it's kind of cool. And I'd love to know what you like better. Which which one you think turned out uh, turned out better in the comments below. And let me know if you're going to try this as well. Now, another thing you can do, which I'm not going to do in this video, but you can always go over this with, um, with like a, uh, with like a color pencil or gel pens or paint pens or whatever supplies you have. And you can get another dimension, another layer of highlight, another layer of shadow, another layer of detail. You can use a pen to get, um, some details in there so you know you do to your picture whatever you like it's your art nobody is in charge of that except for you you are the boss of your artwork hmm. i just find a fresh pot a fresh pot in my palette i know you can't see that but i just mixed a little um of the mint of that viridian with my uh with my white because I just didn't want it so white on that side, so cool on that side. So I'm just going to look over here, see if there's anything else I want to do. I don't want to add white to this one because I have the white of the paper, but I do feel like I need a little bit more shadow on the napkin. So I'm going to use a cerulean and burnt umber to make my shadow color. And just kind of go in there and add a little bit of shadow under the napkin. It can be uh, a little... I don't know, it can be very easy to go overboard on whites or to go completely under, under, uh, 
overwhelming on the whites when you're trying to paint something white in watercolor because you have to really look for color and I'm actually kind of fudging this napkin because I don't have one to look at um, but I do want to have a little bit of contrast there so that's what I'm doing and I'll also use that color just to go in anywhere if I want to darken up some areas that I don't want a lot of color in um, but other than that I think I'm pretty happy with how this one's come out. I could do some white highlights on the ice cream, but I don't think I'm going to. I think I'm going to leave it just like that. So here you go. Uh, these were super fun to paint and um, something I like to do, you don't have to, but I like to add some like spatters, especially on the watercolor ones. So I'm just going to put a piece of paper to cover that up. I am going to grab my bit larger round and I am going to liquefy some of this uh, rose colored paint so that I can get some nice big splatters. And something else I like to do is just do big, like kind of, I'll do some big drops of water. Because I mean, to me, the, I don't know, when I see these big spatters, it reminds me of sprinkles and jimmies. And I just think that's really fun on something like this which, that would be a really casual card. Like, I'd probably use this for like a happy birthday card. And so if I can spatter into some puddles of water, I think that looks really nice. I'm going to do some yellow as well. I'm going to do some of this lemon yellow here. And I'm just going to spatter that on top. If it hits some of the um, some of the other colors, it'll bl it'll mix. But these are nice, bright, uh, pure colors, so I don't think it'll give me mud. And I'm also going to do that with some blue, uh, the cerulean. If I can find enough space to mix it out and not get it all muddy, and I just think it's going to give me a really nice look on this painting. Okay, here you can see the uh, background dried pretty much. There might be a couple <laughs> wet spots, but I dried most of that. I just really like that confetti look. Now, if you feel like you want a little more punch of light, one of my favorite things to do is to use a paint pen um, or a white gel pen. I like the Posca paint pens. I find that they work really well. This isn't going to work. Um, well, it'll still work on top of the gouache, but it really works well on the watercolor paper because it's got a little bit more to grab to. Uh, the texture of the paper will be a little bit more intact than it will in the gouache, but you can go in and get those nice bright uh, highlights if you feel like you've lost them during the process, but I really don't think you need to. That's completely up to you. Um, I will try it over here on top of the gouache. I can feel that it's definitely on top of a, uh, like a slick, paint when I do it this way. So if you are going to use this on top of gouache, I would recommend that you scribble this um, out on a scrap. You scribble your your uh, pen on a scrap of paper uh, before you put it away, just in case you picked up any of the um, any of the paints underneath. But there you have it on white and on craft using watercolors. Uh, watercolors are very versatile and I hope you give them a try today. Uh, the paints I used today are from Joy Art. Make sure you look in the video description for a link to these on Amazon and a 10% off coupon code. And um, the paper was the Tone Tan Mixed Media Paper and the Strathmore Watercolor Cards. So I will link to all of this underneath. These are watercolor pencils. You can use whatever kind you have. These happen to be aqua blends because that's what I have on my desk. And um, that pretty much does it. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.